trunks, they ever ready. Yeah. Assault and battery, if you scared, you never okay, ready. this video is gonna be about the uh, amazing amount of rumors that have been going around the uh, wrestling news sites over the past few days. Ever since that photo of The Undertaker was uh, leaked of him doing curls, he's looking leaner than ever, looking younger than ever, looking like he's gonna kick someone's ass, honestly. And with all these, uh, with all these rumors going around, somehow Sting got involved, and now you have Undertaker and Sting reportedly going to appear within the next few weeks, possibly at the pay-per-view, but either way, they're scheduled to, to, to make an appearance. And whether you're going to make an appearance now, at the pay-per-view, or in a couple weeks, you have SummerSlam right around the corner, and it's pretty much booked as the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. And I know there was talks uh, around WrestleMania 29, after his match with CM Punk, that Taker and Kane were going to do a match against The Shield, with Daniel Bryan, it was going to be a six-man tag, but Undertaker got injured at the uh, SmackDown in London, so it didn't happen. So you know there's been talks about Taker doing a SummerSlam match for a few years now. To be honest, seeing Undertaker this past year, like, few months ago at WrestleMania, the dude looked great, you know, compared to WrestleMania 30, I know he had a concussion going into the match, or in, like, during the match, but just physically looking at him, he just looked like he was so much healthier and just like he could go again. And, you know, WrestleMania 30, it was just, it looked like a disaster. He looked like a disaster. And now that you have Sting and Taker together, I really would have thought, even if they do have their matches SummerSlam, let's say, I don't know what's going to happen for WrestleMania 32. You have Cowboy Stadium, you're supposed to be packing that building with 100,000 plus people. You would think that they're going to save their biggest match for that event rather than uh, uh, Barclays Center. I think that's where SummerSlam is. For SummerSlam. With Sting, I can't see him facing a bigger guy than The Undertaker. You know the match is going to happen whether it be now or WrestleMania, but Sting and Taker like peanut butter and jelly. It's like the match that should have happened so many years ago when the guys are pretty much in their prime. It's when in the heyday of both companies, it was always like, what would happen if Undertaker faced Sting? The, their characters are just so alike, and it was just like they were meant to face each other, and Hell in a Cell would be even better. So, I can't picture who else Sting would face. Undertaker, there's a whole lineup of people I would love to see Undertaker face, but Sting, him being the WCW guy, which he'll always be for the rest of his career, whether or not he's in that WWE uh, picture or not, he's... All the storylines are going to be revolved around him being the guy in WCW. And when that happens, well, goddamn, we can't let a guy in WCW put over one of our guys. You know, he will lose every single match from now, from from here to ever. He'll beat up Bo Dallas, he'll beat up Zack Ryder, but he'll never win a big match because he'll always be that WCW guy. And with that being said, I can't see Sting facing a young guy who, who pretty much wasn't in that Attitude Era because Sting is a guy who you put in a ring where it's like a dream match situation. Triple H being one, The Rock being another, Stone Cold, Undertaker, Kane, whoever. Maybe not Kane, but you know what I mean. These big stars who were in the Attitude Era where you, when, when I was eight years old, I was like, man, what would happen if Sting faced this guy? Sting faced that guy. I can see Undertaker going into WrestleMania if he, if he doesn't face uh, Sting, I can see him facing Seth Rollins. I can see him going against John Cena because WrestleMania 32 is going to be that show where they're going to have everybody in at that event. And I think some matches have already been semi-confirmed. When I say semi, I mean they've talked about it so much that you know what's going to happen. Three of them, uh, I guess you can say The Rock and Triple H. Stone Cold and dare I say Brock Lesnar. And then Undertaker and Sting. Those are three. And now let's say Sting and Undertaker already happened. That leaves two big matches. Since you have two guys who are not going at it. Eddie. Undertaker versus John Cena. That match that people have been talking about since I would say 2008, 2007. What could have happened at WrestleMania 23 to be honest. But faced, uh, faced Batista instead. Chris Jericho versus The Undertaker. I know you guys are kind of eh, whatever. But those two guys know how to work, they know how to put on a good show, they know how to do promo work, and I think it would be an incredible match. And even Seth Rollins uh, 
Because like I said before, I can't see Sting going in there facing a young guy, making him look good. But Undertaker, I can definitely see him, like he did at WrestleMania 31, face Bray Wyatt. I know it didn't come out as great as everyone would have wanted uh, that before, during, and after. I can see him coming back, doing a tag team thing, because there's been so many references involving Kane. Uh, I can 100% see Kane and Undertaker versus Seth Rollins and, and someone in there somewhere. Maybe Triple H, but probably not. That's just my thing. If Undertaker comes back, he doesn't face Sting, he, he, he'll he probably be in a tag team match. Can he do a singles match? Hey, sure, five minute, two on one handicap match against J&J &J Security, why not? But uh, I think the safe bet would be that uh, the Brothers of Destruction will be reunited and uh, do something with Seth Rollins. But that's it. I'll uh, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next video.